we go on to the word of god this morning shall we turn our bibles to john's gospel in chapter 16 and let's read from verses 17 to 28 john 16 verses 17 to 28 some of his disciples said to one another what does he mean by saying in a little while you will see me no more and then after a little while you will see me and because i am going to the father they keep asking what does he mean by a little while we don't understand what he is saying jesus saw that they wanted to ask him about this so he said to them are you asking Are you asking one another what I meant when I said in a little while you will see me no more and then after a little while you will see me I tell you the truth you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices and you will grieve but your grief will turn to joy A woman giving birth to a child has pain because a time has come but when her baby is born she forgets the anguish because of her joy that a child is born into the world So with you now is your time of grief but I will see you again and you will rejoice and no one will take away your joy in that day you will no longer ask me anything I will tell you the truth my father will give you whatever you ask in my name until now you have not asked for anything I tell you the truth my father will give you whatever you ask in my name until now you have not asked for anything in my name ask and you will receive and your joy will be complete this is a amazing passage of scripture that jesus is talking about now this is a, a long talk that he is having with his disciples in the context of he getting prepared to leave this world he is going to be crucified on the cross he is going to die he is going to be buried and he is going to rise again but he is not going to stay here on the earth forever but he is going to ascend back into heaven going to be with his father and here he promises to send his holy spirit in fact beginning from chapter 14 onwards all the way down through 16 he is talking about sending of the holy spirit and now when he is telling them about his plan what his plan is he is as he reveals all of these details the disciples are worried they are having some kind of a, a discomfort among themselves they are perplexed in such a manner where they are talking to themselves and they are, they are saying what does he mean by saying in a little while he's going to go but in a little while you will see me again and then you will see me no more you've not asked me anything he's talking about many things he's saying i'm going to send you a comforter it's good for me to go away um have you heard when people say you know i'm going to go um i'm going to die sometimes god reveals to some people before they pass away they very clearly know that um uh, you know their life is leaving and probably they are in a sick bed and uh, they know you know in their spirit sometimes the lord reveals to them and they know and sometimes they say it out they say it beforehand probably a week ahead or a few days ahead and sometimes it's very difficult uh, for those who are listening to that you know when they say that they are going away so this is a kind of uh, uh, and they were also questioning what is he saying a little while and then he's going to come back again they couldn't really process this resurrection because they have never uh could imagine that jesus would die and actually rise again from the dead although he had told them many times uh figuratively and sometimes even plainly and so they are in this confusion and they are also grieving and that's why jesus is talking about grief here he's talking about grieving and he tells them uh knows what they're talking about and he gets into this conversation he barges into this conversation even though um you know they are not asking him specifically but they are pondering on these lines and uh, jesus is barging into this conversation and breaking in and saying in verse 19 are you asking one another one another what i meant when i said in a little while you will see me no more and then after a while you will see me 
and then he goes on to explain about it in verse 20 onwards i tell you the truth you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices you will grieve but your grief will turn into joy hallelujah praise the lord he was just clearing their mind he was just clearing out the confusion uh he was trying to help them to know to see what is going to happen while jesus is going to be crucified the disciples would be scattered they're going to run away out of fear and you know that none of the disciples were standing there except for john and peter was following following at a distance and peter himself uh, was afraid and uh, uh, you know while that girl came and asked uh, jesus are you also one among uh, uh, you know him uh, and this group and uh, pointing at her and pointing a connection with jesus peter got so you know um, afraid and ran away and he said i don't know him and that's how it was they were all perplexed all of the disciples were scattered in fact jesus himself tells about that in verse 32 but a time is coming and has come when you will be scattered each to his own home you will leave me all alone yet i am not alone for my father is with me so this is what is going to happen and the disciples are all going to be scattered and here they are in this confusion and jesus is coming there and telling them the world will rejoice demons in hell is go- are going to rejoice the devil thought that with jesus being crucified he killed jesus and the story of jesus is over he thought that everything can be done away with and the disciples were all grieving because their master is dead now he is beaten he is crucified and they are afraid of their own lives as well because they were his followers and so the same thing that happened to jesus could happen to them as well because the jews are so much against jesus and they got the romans to come and kill jesus but what is happening here is jesus is warning them ahead of time not just warning them but also giving them a wonderful promise hallelujah he's giving them a great assurance and telling them the world will rejoice and you will grieve but then your grief is not going to be permanent but your grief will turn into joy hallelujah because there's one day uh, you know there's going to be a complete turn around of everything which is just in 3 days down the line you know over the weekend there is going to be a resurrection morning and jesus is going to rise up from the dead and the disciples are going to be reunited with jesus and they're going to rejoice and uh, now the larger context of the whole passage so the discourse of jesus here is in the context of sending his spirit and so we can't ignore that because that will do injustice to the text jesus is talking in the context of sending down his holy spirit talking about he going away and it's good that he would go away so that the spirit of god would dwell with them always because jesus cannot be with them physically all the time everywhere and so he's going to send down the third person of the trinity the holy spirit who will be there with us and with the church and with everybody all the time until jesus comes back again the second time and so jesus is giving them this assurance and it is in this context that this whole conversation is happening and so you see the the way jesus is encouraging them that they can just rejoice because the holy spirit is going to come to them they can rejoice because the father in heaven is going to answer that whatever they ask they are not going to be left all alone hallelujah and so it is with us this morning also i don't know what kind of a grief that you have in your heart in your life and what you are grieving about but whatever you may be grieving about your grief will turn into joy hallelujah because the reality of the death and the resurrection of jesus is an evidence for us to know that what he said happened amen the reality of his death and resurrection proves to us that what he says is true and what he says happens even the most impossible of the things of a person coming back to life if that can happen anything can happen one of the most impossible things is for a dead person to come alive isn't it and that to after 3 days sometimes when a person is declared clinically dead um sometimes a person can be revived uh, what is that crp or no what do they use some kind of a cpr right yeah um 
and and the revive a person back to life and uh, sometimes you know it works and many people you know have probably the um you know pulse has gone down and uh, the body is beginning to get cold and but then suddenly the life comes back and they get revived those are revival you know they get revived but but a person who's dead and buried in a tomb coming back to life is exceptionally an impossible thing that happens and so if that can happen anything can happen hallelujah praise the lord if god is able to raise jesus from the dead the holy spirit you know the spirit of the living god who is a power of resurrection brought jesus back from the dead his physical body back to life anything can happen amen hallelujah he can bring forth anything back into your life and he can bring joy back into your life once again hallelujah praise the lord whatever be the thing that can be causing a grief in your life that is not going to be permanent god is able to bring back in a, a joy into your hearts back again in a new way that you never expected now although all of these things really happen but the assurance the promise that god gave was also fulfilled with the coming of the spirit their grief was turned into joy because of the holy spirit who came who came and abided with them always he was promising them in fact in verse number if you go back to in chapter 16 and read verse number um 7 in 6 onwards in fact uh, you see jesus is encouraging them because i have said these things you are filled with grief what did he say verse 5 he's saying i'm going to him who sent me yet none of you ask me where are you going he was talking about going going all the time and because of all of this you know people the disciples were filled with so much grief and but then he goes on verse 7 and he says but i tell you the truth it is for your good that i am going away unless i go away the counselor will not come to you but if i go i will send him to you when he comes he will convict the world of guilt in regard to sin and righteousness and judgment and also you see in verse uh, chapter 14 of john's gospel in verse 25 all this i have spoken still with you Uh, but the counsel of the holy spirit whom the father will send in my name will teach you all things and will remind you of everything i have said to you and he gives and sa- tells them peace i leave with you my peace i give you i do not give to you as the world gives do not let your hearts be troubled do not be afraid so he's constantly encouraging them because he knows that their hearts will fail he knows that their hearts will be troubled he knows that they will you know lose their uh, strength and their will to continue to serve the lord he knows that they will become heartbroken he knows that they will be filled with fear and terror will strike them when he is crucified but yet ahead of time he's preparing them and saying your grief will turn into joy do not let your heart be troubled do not be afraid my peace i give to you he is constantly encouraging them hallelujah and i believe that we also need this encouragement constant encouragement to our hearts as well that god will turn our grief into joy hallelujah amen praise the lord i don't care what kind of thing that you're grieving about this morning maybe it's a blessing that has been hindered maybe it's some kind of a need that you have in your life maybe it's a sickness it's a bad report from the doctor maybe it is some kind of a relationship that is broken probably it's within your family probably it's uh, about a financial need that you are facing maybe you just don't have water in your house you know you know how much it can trouble you if you have to be uh, struggling with you know trying to get water in these days where we uh, have so much of uh, water scarcity in the city and you know in the country now it, it can be anything that can actually come trouble us in such a manner that we can be so uh, burdened and so much worried in so many different ways each one has uh, have their own share of burdens each one have their own share of needs and expectations and anxieties that each one lives with but i want us to know this morning if you are grieving about anything about any person or any situation there is joy coming to you hallelujah your grief will turn into joy hallelujah 
Amen. Why don't you look at the person sitting next to you and and give a smile on, uh, have a smile on your face and get them to smile and say joy to them. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, you know, maybe uh, maybe we, we also need to get back to the old Methodist practice of passing on the joy. You know, uh, do you know of that? Uh, any old Methodists here who know that, you know, what do you call that? Passing on the joy or passing on the peace. Peace, right? Everyone shakes hands and, and says, peace, peace. And they, the next person says, peace, amen. And you pass it on, amen, hallelujah. That's the old Methodist passing of the peace, amen. Hallelujah. Let not the peace fall to the ground and fall into and break into pieces. <laughs> Hallelujah. Pass the peace safely. <laughs> Amen. Peace be unto you. Peace be unto you. Pass it on. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't think it went to the back rows. Pass on the peace. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. God wants us to be rejoicing. God wants us to be in peace. God wants us wants to turn our grief into joy. But that is going to happen by the coming of the Holy Spirit. That's the assurance that he gave to the disciples. It is not just an empty word. It is not just saying, oh, everything will be fine. Oh, don't worry. What, what to do? Life is all about that. You know, you'll have ups and downs. You'll have some cloudy days. You'll have some sunny days. So it's all going to be fine. Uh, it's not just some way of kind of uh, making ourselves patting on our own backs and saying hey it's going to be fine all right somehow let's make it up it's not just gearing up with our own willpower it's not gearing ourselves up by our own strength but it is the presence of god by the coming of the holy spirit this peace is going to come and rest with them because the presence of the holy spirit is going to abide with them that's what jesus is saying here in verse 26 and 27 we read right now in chapter 14 of gospel of john he says the Holy Spirit is going to come and he's going to teach you all things. And my peace I leave with you. The Lord wants to have peace in our hearts and he wants to give us peace that the world cannot give and the world can never take it away. And that's what he said, um, you know, in, in verse 22 of uh, 16, chapter 16 and verse 22. So with you, now is your time of greed, but I will see you again and you will rejoice and no one will take away your joy. Hallelujah. It is the peace that the world cannot give and nobody can take away that joy also. Amen. Hallelujah. You see both of these in 14, uh, 27 and in 16, 22. You see both of these 14, 27, 16, 22. It's a peace that the world cannot give that the Lord gives and this joy, no man can take it away also. Hallelujah. This is not something that you get, you know, when you buy something new, you buy a new iPad, you will definitely be excited about it. You know, uh, some of you speaking to young people you know for some of you probably older people when your son or your daughter get married you know you'll be very happy you know you'll be very excited and our baby is born you're very happy excited you know now there are many good things that happen in our lives that give us happiness but yeah we are happy about it and sometimes some people after a while they are not so happy after they got married you know that's another matter. But the point is that happiness comes through many things. Good things happen. We are all happy about it. Amen. Praise the Lord. If, if the chief minister is giving us all three televisions, flat screen, we will all be happy about it. You know. So there will be many things that will bring us happiness into our lives. But you know, one thing that can never go away is the joy of the Lord. That comes because of our relationship with the Lord. That comes because of the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit who is with us. Hallelujah. Amen. Because that's what the Bible says. That's what Jesus is talking about. The coming of the Spirit. By the coming of the Spirit. Chapter 16 verse 7 we read that. We read that. Unless I go away the counselor will not come to you. But if I go away I will send him to you. And he will be with us. His presence will be with us. He's a counselor. He's a comforter. He's a, he's a God who is with us always. He, his presence never leaves us. 
the spirit of the lord is always with us wherever we are if you are a child of god and if you have the presence of the holy spirit if you opened your heart to the spirit of the lord and if you received him in your in your life if you asked him to forgive your if you of your sins if you renounced everything of this world if you renounced everything of the worship systems of the world if you renounce every idol worship if you renounce every sin if you renounce every false practice and false god and 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 you renounce sin in your life and you following jesus you are a child of god certainly the presence and the spirit of god is with you hallelujah if you ask jesus to be the lord of your life if you worship him only and nothing else and no one else you have the spirit of god in you hallelujah praise the lord amen and if you're turning away from sin and you reject sin and you love jesus and you love holiness and you love his presence and you love his spirit and you want him to be with you he is with you by faith hallelujah so by the coming of the holy spirit your grief is turned into joy by the presence of the holy spirit with you your grief turns into joy hallelujah he is not going to go away forever where he is leaving the disciples and leaving every one of us all alone to fend for ourselves to live by ourselves we are not alone in this world jesus said lo i am with you even to the end of the age hallelujah for he said you know i will never leave you nor forsake you hallelujah and so these these promises of god are real to us for every one of us where we have his presence always with us and by the coming of the spirit our grief will be turned into joy and secondly now this grief that has come into their life is because they are confused because they have questions because they have unanswered questions because they're wondering what's going to happen to them they're wondering what's going to happen to their master what is he saying it's very confusing it's so much of uh, causing so much of perplexity uh, it, the questions that they are grappling with are very real very genuine uh, this is a very real grief this is not just kind of an intellectual reasoning that they are happen having about it's not a theological uh, conversation or a you know uh, a debate or an argument or a uh, an, an idea that they are processing it's not a concept that they are processing together but they are really having this genuine grief that is affecting them this is something that is causing sadness into their hearts this is a question this is a confusion that they are that they are uh, here with about what's going to happen to jesus what's going to be their future what's about their life and many times we are also facing with such questions what is god doing in our lives what is going to be about our future where are we heading to which direction are we moving to what is going to be the future course of our life how will my life be like who will i marry what kind of a life am i going to have how am i going to settle down what's going to be the future like you know how are people around going to be me uh, be with me you know how are they going to treat me how are they going to handle me how am i going to handle people around me so many questions so many doubts so many fears what is god doing with us you know there seem to be no answer from him it looks like god is forsaking us it looks like you know things are going from bad to worse sometimes many times we come up with so many questions like these and we are wondering oh, where is god in all of this what is he doing and many times those things bring a lot of grief we feel very lonely we feel left alone we feel like god has forsaken us forgotten us sometimes we feel like god has gone away from us we don't seem to feel his presence we don't seem to feel you know him hearing our prayer we don't seem to feel him answering our prayers we don't see any visible answers coming to us and the, those things bring grief and sorrow into our hearts they're filled with questions with doubts they're curious they it's mixed with fear it's sometimes they've been with questions seeking a position sometimes they had questions uh, with lack of faith on his word lack of trust in him many times you know all through the journey of walking with jesus they had many many questions but here this is something that has brought in grief sometimes there are questions that don't bring grief there are questions which we process intellectually but there are questions that bring us grief there are doubts and fears mixed together with anxieties and uh, uncertainties that bring a lot of grief into our hearts but here is a time where there will be a clarity that comes from the spirit of god hallelujah everything will become clear and that happened 
you know when the lord said your grief will turn into joy it really turned into joy now all of these questions that they were grappling with didn't seem to find they didn't seem to find any answer they didn't seem to settle with something and they didn't seem to have immediate expression of joy and it didn't seem to be like whatever jesus said was so satisfactory because even though jesus was trying to encourage them it didn't seem to be turning the situation immediately the reality seemed to be still the same even though jesus was speaking to them but you know what happened when the holy spirit came upon them on the day of pentecost and they were filled with the spirit of the lord and what happened all of these confusions all of these questions all of these fears all of these doubts everything vanished by the coming of the spirit and there was a great clarity they had with the coming of the spirit hallelujah that's the second thing one number one the grief is turned into joy when the spirit of the lord comes by the coming of the holy spirit secondly this when the grief will turn into joy not just by the coming of the spirit but when the spirit of the lord comes he clears everything he brings clarity hallelujah amen praise the lord you see all of these disciples were so confused and were so much grieving and so scattered after this when jesus died and all of these confusions and everything happens it looks like everything jesus had built for the last three and a half years everything collapsed and ultimately even after jesus rose from the dead peter went fishing and all of the disciples followed him instead of following jesus and they left fishing and came to follow jesus but now they stop following jesus and go back to fishing now with all things and confusion that came into their lives when the holy spirit came upon them as they were waiting and praying in the presence of god they were waiting and tarrying in jerusalem and the spirit of the lord came upon them immediately when the spirit of the lord came all the questions and doubts and fears and everything that bothered them and all the grief that had come upon their lives everything left in a moment peter stands up with 11 and starts preaching the gospel hallelujah and then after that not once you see any of the disciples asking a question like this saying where is jesus do you see a question in 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 these lines where is he where is he he said in a little while and he'll come again what is this what's going on with him where is he what is our predicament what is our future you know what is going to happen to us do you see any question like that anywhere next of the apostles or the rest of the new testament you don't see anything like that they are moving in the power of the holy spirit with much clarity they are being led by the holy spirit they are having a clear direction from the holy spirit all of these confusions all those things that brought grief and sorrow into their life all of these things that took away their peace and their clarity and brought them you know made them anxious and confused everything left hallelujah by the coming of the holy spirit and the holy spirit cleared all the roadblocks in their minds amen hallelujah what we need is the infilling and the presence and the power and the leading of the holy spirit and a walking in the spirit and walking with the spirit of god and so the spirit of god will constantly clear out everything that confuses us has anybody had an experience where you had questions and grief and sorrow and you grieving over many things like these and suddenly you you felt that there is no other place to go to but you ran to the presence of god and you were suddenly filled with the spirit of the lord in such a manner that the spirit of the lord just lifted all of those burdens and you came out of the presence of god with such clarity after an hour of prayer or something like that amen anybody had that kind of an experience suddenly all the doubts go away all the fear go away all the anxieties go away all those things that look like a big mountain standing on top of our head everything vanished and you became so light hearted and you filled with so much peace and filled with so much of joy hallelujah that's the work of the holy spirit that's the power of the holy spirit Hallelujah we don't see him with our naked eyes but you see his mighty work working in our own hearts and our lives Hallelujah much more than we expect to see for the manifestation and the power of the holy spirit externally sometimes people are looking for an external manifestation and wherever there is a spirit of god involved with a person with involved with an human being there will be a manifestation 
there will be a manifestation when the spirit of god is engaging with the person there will be a manifestation and sometimes you're looking for an external manifestation where sometimes under the power of the holy spirit a person is not physically able to withstand he falls maybe the spirit of god comes upon a person in such a manner where they are beginning to uh, you know clap hands or probably they are beginning to uh, you know physically show some external manifestations and sometimes we think that the power of the holy spirit is manifested only externally but i want you to know that the power of the holy spirit will manifest himself with you internally first hallelujah and when the power of the spirit manifests internally and he engages with your heart and in your life and in your in your innermost being in your spirit and then out of that change and transformation that happens on the inside sometimes a person may manifest externally maybe they may start laughing <laughs> maybe they may start rejoicing they may start clapping hands they may start jumping that's just an external manifestation of what's happened on, on to them internally this is not just some kind of an emotional makeup but sometimes some people do uh, where in some meetings probably you might see some people just showing off too much uh, that's if it's not from the holy spirit it's not right but when the spirit of god comes into a person and engages with a person and the person opens their heart to the spirit of god and the spirit of god is working in their lives and the spirit of god is dealing with them surely the first sign is you will begin to experience a great peace and a great joy hallelujah your heaviness will leave your grief and sorrow will leave you will become light hearted and you will begin to be rejoicing hallelujah praise the lord all those questions and doubts and fears and everything that caused perplexity and confusion in their lives everything vanished and they here focusing on the mission for which christ called them to amen hallelujah praise the lord aren't you excited about it this morning amen praise the lord and that's what you see they don't uh, you know and that's one of the work of the holy spirit which jesus himself is saying in chapter 16 and verse 23 you read that in that day you will no longer ask me anything now this is not about asking for money or food or clothing it's not praying for needs what jesus is talking about is the asking about who he is and what he's going to do and what's going to be the future like and all this confusion that they had about trying to believe in god they they were doubting and full of fear in that in that context jesus is talking about talking to them and he says in that day you will no longer ask me when your grief is turned to joy when the holy spirit comes and you're not going to be asking me anything you're not going to be doubting me you're not going to be questioning me you're not going to be perplexed you're not be going to live, live in confusion hallelujah amen that's what jesus is telling me i tell you the truth verse 23 my father will give you whatever you ask in my name amen and the promise is that this answer in the name of jesus with this with the coming of the holy spirit your grief is turned into joy with the presence of the holy spirit your his peace his joy comes into your heart into your life with the coming of the spirit there is clarity you receive a clarity all the confusion all the questions doubts fears you know things that you wonder about ponder about oh is this this is it that is it this person is it that person is it something going wrong with me something going wrong with my family something going wrong with people around me is there somebody doing something against me all this confusion all this perplexity everything leaves there's a clarity when the holy spirit comes and thirdly when you ah, your grief is turned into joy as you receive answers from the father in heaven hallelujah which is promised to us you read that in chapter 16 verse 23 and 24 jesus says in that day you will no longer ask me anything that is out of confusion and doubt and fear i tell you the truth my father will give you whatever you ask in my name until now you have not asked anything for anything in my name now jesus has already been providing everything for them he is physically with them so they have not asked anything from him So until now you have not asked me anything to the father in my name because he is physically there with them but now ask and you will receive and your joy will be complete hallelujah praise the lord ask and you will receive and your joy will be complete now here is his assurance that there is answers to prayer in the name of Jesus now he is physically not going to be there so don't be worried 
that he is not physically here don't be worried that i'm not going to be with you you know i'm going to go away but i'm going to send you a comfort of the holy spirit with him you he's going to bring you joy he's clearing going to clear out all the confusion he's bringing clarity and not only the holy spirit the father is also involved whatever you ask in my name the father is not is going to going to answer you hallelujah praise the lord but you last the father even though jesus is not physically present here in the name of jesus whatever you ask as a child of god what does it mean when you ask in the name of jesus means that you appeal to the father in the name of his son you come through him to the father we don't have to go through any other human being or a saint or even through the mother of jesus even the mother of jesus is dead and buried and she has no authority or power over anything that you know you pray about whatever you pray in the, you pray in the name of jesus but as you pray in the name of jesus you know what happens is that you are appealing to the father through his son in the sense that you also have this relationship with jesus as you are his child amen praise the lord you become his he has owned you he you come to believe in him and for everyone who believes in his name he gives them the right to become children of god hallelujah and as a child of god you appeal in the name of jesus because you've been redeemed by his blood and so we have access to the father through the name of jesus you pr- you call on the father in the name of jesus and whatever you ask in his name he's going to give it to you there's no doubt about whether you will receive it or not until now they've held on to jesus and he has provided for them he has led them but now he's turning them over to ask anything in his name and he's going to answer them and when he answers them their joy is going to be full the grief is going to be turned into joy when you receive answers to prayer suddenly your grief will turn into joy hallelujah and i want you to know that jesus has given us this promise this assurance that whatever you ask in his name he will give amen praise the lord so what do you need this morning what is this, what are those things that are grieving your heart and what are those areas of your life where you want to experience joy you want to have a joy amen hallelujah i pray this morning that the spirit of the lord will fill us with a heart of joy in us that the spirit of the lord will clear out all the confusion questions doubts fears perplexities anxieties and fill you with joy run to the presence of god spend time with the holy spirit talk to him spend time with him receive him and receive his power receive his presence and be in his presence stay with him and you will see all those mountainous things mountainous things will just leave you hallelujah and whatever you ask in his name you're not alone he's not left you alone he's given you an assurance that whatever you ask in the name of jesus to the father he will give you and your heart will be filled with great joy hallelujah you're no longer going to be sorrowful you're no longer going to be grieving you're no longer going to be crying no longer going to be you know wailing over things that have not yet happened or things that you're expecting or things that you don't have answers for you're wondering i've done it all right by why everything is going wrong you're not going to be grieving anymore but whatever you ask in the name of jesus the father in heaven is going to give it to you hallelujah and your joy will be complete let's pray and receive this joy this morning the joy of the lord fill our hearts this morning hallelujah